Elder Lloyd Blair. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Uh, most of you, we uh, had met, I think, and uh, so I feel especially at home, and we appreciate the kindness and the way that you have received us, and we hope that uh, that when we leave that you won't say, glad to get rid of that. <laughs> but if you do, please don't say it while we're around. <laughs> it is uh, it is a good time, and, and it's a special good time to uh, be here. I may have been at this church one time before, but it's been quite a while. And we used to come up and, and be with Brother Pruitt and some of them uh, uh, quite often and, and just uh, just enjoyed being around this general area and with the people. We, I like to go places where that the feeling is good. Amen. You know, that usually starts with a song service. Uh, and if uh, I always feel like that that if I or anyone else uh, misses the song service, they've missed a whole lot. Yeah. And it, it just kind of it kind of clears your mind and, and and just gets you in in frame to enjoy some of the other parts. Uh, we appreciate the invitation uh, from Brother Brad to talk for a few minutes. We, I, I kind of slow now and I beg that you be patient with me. Sometimes I can hardly get, get my thoughts together. But for a few moments, is the Lord willing, uh, if you have your Bibles and, and would like to read along with me, whatever, then please feel free to do so. But I'm uh, looking at, uh, at the book of John. To me, that's, that's one of the most uh, pleasant scriptures uh, that we have and if you know if, if we just get up sometimes I'm, maybe somebody else does this and just don't don't feel good about you know and it's just kind of one of them days uh, Jonah's a good that's a good way to start out the morning we sometimes after we have breakfast we uh just sit back and, and we talk about the scripture and the church and the Lord's people mm -hmm. and uh, it just kind of clears some of the junk out of the way and gets you off to a good start. And any time that we can do that, it does. Jonah is one of the at least one of the two uh, very impressive writers in the scripture. He don't tell us one thing about his family. And I really don't think there's anything wrong with his family, but uh, but the, the Lord just kind of kept him you know, on track and and wrote a a, a, a short book in in the, in the, in our Bible, but it's certainly not short on content. Right. And that's what's important. It's not how many pages or how many words. It's. Uh, either in the scripture or 
coming from a pulpit. But just a just a, a a few words sometimes if we can just uh, think about that and 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 get some good out of it. Right. And and when it goes home, go home. Uh, uh, check your Bible. See if see if it's there like you heard it. That's good. That's good for the preacher and it's good for the church. And. They, they just such good things in here. I like the way that this book begins. Such wonderful words. Con convicting words. No, uh, uh, Jonah, he's just not going through some routine here. There, there's there's a lot of essence in what it's one of the shortest books physically in the Bible. That's the only sense in which it's short. Begin with the first chapter and the first verse and, and read a little bit and I'll we'll be mindful of the time. Now the word of the Lord of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of a Mittai. And what is amazing to me, and, and one of the things that I noticed, at least one of two writers in the scriptures, he didn't say one thing about his daddy. <laughs> I don't know that that means anything, but it just it, it just caught my eye in uh a lot of times you will have uh, either a father or a mother and one of them will be more dedicated to the church and, and more involved in it. And uh, we, we all wish that, that everyone could and, and would, but uh, right. that won't happen in this lifetime probably, but as many as we can. <clears throat> The Lord is going to tell Jonah to go somewhere and preach that he don't want to go. It's it's hard enough if if you're uh, a place where you want to be. But sometimes it's necessary to be where you don't want to be. Right. But Jonah decided to go somewhere else. How many times have we felt like doing or going somewhere or saying something and we know it's the right thing but we just don't want to do what the right thing is. And a lot of times we don't. And a lot of times we wind up like Jonah did. Mm -hmm. Some things we cannot get away from. We can change location, but we still got whatever it was. The issue st is still there. But Jonah gets, he thinks by changing location that, that he's going to get rid of the problem. He soon finds out that rather than that, he's just multiplied. Now he's going to, he, he's going to, he's going to take a ship and he's going to try to get away from there. And I understand it, it's it's somewhat in the northern part of the uh, of the Mediterranean Sea that's called now, but it, but it's kind of like in in Tennessee and in, in Alabama and Mississippi and Georgia, 
we call it a coal. I don't know if that's the right name or not, but we use it and everybody knows what we're talking about, so it serves a purpose. But he goes up, he's, he's just running. And lo and behold, he's in uh he's in that position and a whale swallows him. He didn't he didn't see that coming. But the point the point that it's making and the point that that I think maybe that we can get out of this is uh, the Lord can do what he wants to. And he's making a point with, with, this, uh, with this old servant that when I bid you to go somewhere, uh, best thing for you to do is go. Amen. And that's not just for preachers. I hope that every one of you that's here this morning is here because the Lord impressed on you, give, give you enough desire that you made the effort to be here. And when we and when we move that way, then, then the Lord, He's going to bless. Now He's going to bless Jonah, but before He does. He's going to make him appreciate a blessing more than he ever thought he could. Right. Yes. Now, out of this, out of this uh, waterway here, all of a sudden there's a whale, and and I know there's thousands of jokes made about, uh, you know. The whale swallowing a man, but but this is real, and 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 there's a lot of implications here, a lot of uh, symbolism. Uh, yeah. But to Jonah, <laughs> it was a whale. I don't know, you know, the Lord uh, can enable people to do what normally they couldn't do. Now, normally, a man could not survive in the belly of a whale three or four days. That just would not happen. But it happened on this occasion, about three days, I believe, is, uh, that he was in the whale, that whale's belly. And I don't know who was getting the most uncomfortable. But I know one thing. That whale spit him out. And he spit him out on land. And Jonah was ready then to try to do what the Lord had told him to do. That You know, that's kind of familiar to us, isn't it? Maybe not in those dramatic senses, but there's been times that that the Lord has impressed on us to do something and we didn't want to do it. And I don't know about you, but I've been given to that. And sometimes he even lets me go for quite a while and I think I've got by with it. I think Daddy must have studied that a lot when we were growing up. Because we get into something and, uh, boy, we hated even go to the house. Supper time, the food wasn't good. Nothing was, but, but you see, he knew that waiting would accomplish more than what he was going to do afterwards. Bible talks a lot about us waiting. 
and how we wait. Yeah. And what are we waiting for? Or maybe who are we waiting for? Come right down to it. We're all waiting on something, aren't we? And I, I wait. I do a lot more waiting probably than I should. But the main thing that I'm waiting for, and I hope that it's what you're waiting for, is one day or one night. But it'll be day then that the Lord is coming back. You know that's real? That, that's not just some idea that somebody talks about. You and I may, we, we may be alive, well, whether we're alive or not, we'll be made alive. But, but if, if we're standing, I would love to be alive like we are today when he comes back. Yeah. I, I cannot imagine what it would, but, but that's a promise. And God has made many promises to us. And I can assure you that he has, uh, if, he, if he hadn't delivered on that promise, he will. Yeah. And God has made some good promises. And he's made some promises That ain't too pleasant. One, he said, if you are ashamed of me before men, yeah. now I won't ask for a raising of hands because uh, if it was true, I think every one of us would have raised both hands. But you know there's consequences of that. He said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. That's serious business. Thank God that that, that sense of shame that he has when we misbehave that way, it doesn't last forever. He has a way, my friend, of changing uh, how you and I feel and think. Thank God he has a way of changing that. Because in, in our natures, uh, uh, we're so foolish. We're just plain foolish. And punishment and correction, it never did fix that. It, constra it constrained it, it contained it, it, whatever, but it didn't fix it. But I tell you, he's going to fix it. He's going to fix it. Sometimes Jonah goes on and, and has some uh, wonderful experiences. If you had, if you've not read that book recently, it's very short. Be time well spent. Because I think somewhere along in there, in, in that short little place in the scripture, that you're going you're gonna to find something that's going to be familiar to you. May not be so pleasant. <laughs> but the pleasant thing about it is, that it didn't stop God from loving this old man. It didn't stop him from, from uh, rescuing him from his own feelings and, and whatever inadequacies that he had. But he took Jonas. He took Jonah and taught him so much. He taught him that it that it didn't make sense to be have pity on a red worm. He 
He told him if, if something in nature, if something happens to it, maybe it's a pet, maybe it's even an individual. And, and, and something uh, horrible, uh, they're going through some hard time, whatever. And we have pity on them. We, we, even, uh, we even have pity on, on things that, you know, maybe we should have just a little bit, but uh, we should know the difference. I'm not going to spend any more time on this. I just, I want you to always start to remember uh, this evening or in the, morning, in the morning when you get up. I mean, where do you have that coffee? Because we can't think until we get about four cups of coffee. Read a short book. There'll be things if they hadn't already, that are that that you can uh, find something similar here. That if it hadn't hap to, happened to you, uh, be patient. If it will. But I tell you, it don't do away with all the sorry way that we think sometimes. But it, but it gives us, it gives us something to help fight those times and to recognize when they're coming up and avoid them. Jonah was in that fish's belly three days and three nights. I bet you he never went to a fish fry afterwards because I'm sure he learned some things and and sometimes when when we go through something like that and it has a bad effect uh, let's not turn around and get in that fix again we have we have some good instruction in the scriptures and the scripture is not just for preachers. Lord knows we need to use it more than we do. But this, th there's nothing like the Bible in the world. Never has been. It, it, it's just, it's better, it's more complete, it's to you personally, and it's to all of his children, wherever they are. And what's sad and what we don't realize and how thankful we are to be to have it. Because so many, the great majority of God's people will never see one of these. Now that's not going to prevent the Lord from delivering them uh, from a state of death and raising them in His likeness. That's not going to prevent that. But what it does, there's great pleasure in the Scriptures. It's not all warnings about what to do if you get if you get a broke leg or something. There's some good things in here. And, and I tell you, this old man, John, after a while, he was ready for something good. Jonah spent three days
something to think about this evening, tonight, tomorrow. Read it. Three days and three nights in that whale's belly when that whale wasn't even supposed to be there. And certainly Jonah wasn't supposed to. But, but God takes things and he uses them like he uses people. And it wasn't any problem for God to put a whale in that water where normally uh, there wouldn't be one. There's just nothing too hard for the Lord. And it's hard for us to remember that. But nothing's too hard for him. When we when we stop and, and just uh just consider how that in the beginning there was nothing but God. That, that, that's hard for us to think that way, but that's how it was. And it didn't take God two million years to get done what he wanted to done. He could have done it in one day, but he chose to do it in a week. But when God created everything in the, in the natural heavens and the spiritual heavens, you know what he, you know what he did? <laughs> he just said, let it be. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed when people are, uh, Read that a lot of people read that and believe that, and yet when some issue comes up, uh, we forget what kind of power God God has. Right. That all He has to do is speak, and He don't even have to say that loud. Amen. And when He speaks, whatever He says stands. Right. Who's going to say no to him? <laughs> we God does things that we can't understand. You know, uh, if we if we don't know more about God than just what we understand, we don't know much about him, do we? One of these days, we'll we'll know. And we know some things about it. I tell you, if, if you've ever been really in a, in a position that, that uh, just the most horrible that you can think of, he can fix that. He can fix that in a moment. He can fix it without you asking. I'm glad that God don't wait uh, for us to ask for everything we need. God saw us. He knows our need. And He cares. And He helps. He delivers when, when we don't even know that dang, danger is present. He delivers us. Certainly the, the great deliverance that, we, that He give us, my friend, he give it. He give us that deliverance before uh, we was ever born in the world. Yeah. You know, Christ could have. Christ could have. He had the power. He could have uh, made that sacrifice uh, for sin for His people before there's ever made. But he did it at the right time and he did it the right way. And uh, what great pleasure, what release it is to have confidence that when he comes again, my friend, it'll, it'll be the fruit of what he's done and not what you and I have done. For our very 
best intentions are faulty because most of the time there's a side issue to them good intentions and in some way it's going to gratify us or, or we're going to get something out of it. You know, let's face it, we, we don't put much labor into anything if we don't expect to get something out of it. Well, I tell you, the Lord expects to get exactly what he intended to get. And I'm glad. I'm glad it's not up to me. I'm glad that it's not up to you. God did not put the welfare of his eternal family in the hands of any man except one man. That was the only one that 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 he trusted enough to do that. Because he knew what he knows what man is. And, and, and if anybody didn't know, just look at the beginning. He took a, a man that was sinless. We don't know how that is, but we know what it was. And put him in a paradise. Told him you can you just Free to eat anything in this God. It's better than anything that we've ever seen or can imagine. Right. Everything in here, you, you're, you're free to, to have it. Except one thing. Just one thing. You know what he wanted? That one thing. But you know, God wasn't surprised. He knew how that was going to come down. He didn't make that man do it, but he knew exactly how that was going to happen because before he ever made uh, that fruit or made that man, my friend, he had, uh, he had a purpose. It's not a plan. God don't need to plan anything. We make plans because we want something to come out like we want it to. But God could see the end from the beginning and he had the power to make things happen that he wanted to happen. And he did. And he done some things to us that's not obvious yet. God loved these old... These, these natural beings that that's, has fought from one end to the other. Right. I might use it that way. But he didn't do it for us because we were good. He didn't do it because of what we deserve. He done it because he loved us. And my friend, that's the that that is great enough reason yeah. that we ought not to be uh, doubtful of what's going to happen when God comes again, and I'm going to close, believe it not, in a second. Well, maybe not. <laughs> but when God comes back, he's going to get exactly what he bought. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Who's going to stop him? You belong to him. You belong to him because God gave you to him. You didn't give yourself. Remember, you're dead in sin. Dead people don't make gifts. All dead people do is smell bad. And that's the shape that you and I was in, my friend. Uh, so we didn't have anything to give him. But I tell you, he had something to give to you. He gave his only begotten son. Amen. Of all the sons that he had, this one had never thought a wrong thought. 
He had never said a wrong word. He never had a wrong feeling. He never done a wrong deed. He he just he was absolutely perfect. But God was going to take his life. That was the problem we had, my friend. They could nobody fix it but him. And I can tell you, he fixed it. Thanks be to God. Come on, my brother. Party amen with what's come before. I, I thoroughly enjoy that subject, and I'm so thankful the Lord blessed you, brother, um, with that on your mind. And I want to pick up where Brother Lloyd left off, and I want to think about this. Look in verse 5 of chapter 2 of Jonah. It says, The waters compassed me about even to the soul. The depth closed me round about, the weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever, yet hast thou brought up my life for corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came in unto thee and to thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry ground or land. I want us to think about that, that how that he went to the very depths of the deepest part of the ocean. Not long ago, uh, you remember the Titan that had gone out into the ocean to go and, and, and observe uh, the Titanic wreckage and how that it imploded on itself and it could not handle the pressures. Uh, I want you to think about that, that... Uh, the, 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 the well the, right here in this book it says the fish it was prepared but later in scripture it, it, it gives the detail that it was a well but this well had been prepared to uh, swallow up Jonah in such a way in which that he takes him to the depths of the, the bottom of the mountains that's where farther than any man has ever been but God uh, in his mighty power is able to understand and see the very depths at the bottoms of the mountains in the ocean. And my dear friends, wasn't that the way uh, the, the scripture talks about it? Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the well. Uh, so was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, there in the tomb. Uh, uh, my dear uh, friends, that's exactly what he was talking about there. Uh, that the very worst and the, uh, the very... Uh, Horrible things that he may have done. Uh, you understand that uh, Jesus Christ has died for your sins. You understand that? And because of a, we couldn't do anything uh, to pay the price that we could pay, but Jesus Christ himself uh, took it upon himself at the cross at Calvary. And I want you to think about the, some things there. Uh, uh, I want you to think about that what all he was going through, uh, what all ag agony he may have been going through. Uh, right now is the day that people set aside for Mother's Day. And to think about mothers, I want you to think about this, uh, that you remember in the Ten Commandments that when it was given there unto Moses, uh, one of the commandments was, is to honor thy mother and what thy father, that thy days may be long what upon the earth. Uh, 
You see, God uh, honors uh, and blesses you when you honor your mother and your father. It may not be easy. Maybe you came out of a bad situation. Uh, but the brothers and sisters that I see here, I see good, uh, where they've had good mothers and good fathers. Uh, but there's been some that we've seen where they didn't have good mothers or good fathers, and it was a troublesome time. But the Bible says, uh, Honor thy mother and thy father, that thy days may be long upon the earth. Let us look over at Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, verse 19. Uh, <clears throat> then came to him his mother and his brethren, and could not come at him for the press. And it was told him by certain which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand with, without, desiring to see thee. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God. Brothers and sisters, I want you to see this, that when he's talking there, um, he's talking to them that he came to see him. But he says, hey, the ones that's standing out there is my mother and brother so much as the ones that's there to do and hear my word. My dear friends, isn't that the way it is that we have spiritual family here in the house of God? Uh, you heard it said earlier there, uh, the old Jerusalem one time at one point that when it talks about Jerusalem being that of the free woman and there, and, uh, you remember the other mouth? Uh, that was not the free woman. That was the bond woman. And you notice this, that Jerusalem is a beautiful picture of the New Testament church. Uh, that was of old time, looking unto what we have now. But brothers and sisters, uh, we've got better things than they had there in the old time. It painted a beautiful picture of what we have in the New Testament church. And when Jesus was saying this, he wasn't saying, hey, I'm going to forsake my mother. I'm going to dishonor my mother. I'm going to dishonor my father. That's not what he was saying. He's saying, hey, it's more important to honor and worship your heavenly father in heaven than that and anything else on this earth. That's what was being preached there uh, before earlier here uh, today. Let us turn over to John chapter 19. John chapter 19. I want us to look at this beginning in verse 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. My, that was like three Marys if you think about it. Uh, <laughs> you think about this, that's a lot. <laughs> but he, he pinpoints and he states his mother as standing there by the cross. Could you imagine seeing your child being there and knowing he is the Savior. He's the King of Kings and he's the Lord of Lords. He is spotless. He's the Son of God. And he's there hanging on the cross of Calvary there. Uh, and you're looking uh, unto him and you're seeing this. Could you imagine the heartache that you might feel? But understanding what he's there to do uh, and remembering, can you imagine what she pondered on? There when angel Gabriel had come unto her and given her a sweet message of what she was to bring forth into this world. Could you imagine what was going through her mind and remembering those messages there? And how powerful and the Spirit of God there in that time and place. I want you to think about that. Could you imagine that very point in time and how precious that is? And Jesus there, I want you to think about what he's saying here. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son! Exclamation. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother! Exclamation. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. Oh, my dear friends, he was providing for her uh, even at that very moment in time because he was honoring what? His mother, uh, was he not? He even fulfilled the law even there while he was hanging upon the cross at Calvary there. He was making sure that she was taken care of and that uh, she was going to be taken care of by a disciple. Not just anybody. Did you get that? Not just anybody, but a disciple. One of the things that was precious there about Jonah when he went into the depths of that ocean that God had provided for him 
and preserve him and take care of him. And that's a beautiful picture there of uh, the baptism that we have in our Lord, my dear friends, in the baptism that we have when we come into the church uh, and that why we submerge there. <laughs> you go down into the depths uh, and you come back up alive in Christ, my dear friends. Uh, that's a beautiful picture, is that not? Now I want you to think about this, that there, as uh, <clears throat> what all was being accomplished. You remember there in uh, Jonah chapter 4? Um, in the last verse it said, And should I not spare Nineveh, that great city wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between the right hand and the left hand and also what much cattle. That city was a wicked city. They had lived in wickedness, but God by his rich mercies and grace, and that's something. But God and his rich mercies and grace understood they could not discern between the left hand and the right hand and much cattle. It sent a preacher man there that didn't get permission by nobody to go, but was sent by God Almighty. You getting that? He didn't have the board to approve it. He didn't have anybody to approve it. He was sent by God and moved of the Holy Spirit of God. And he fought it. But by God's rich mercies and grace, God provided for his children. He had many children there in that great city. Just as if we were to go to a city like Las Vegas today, and such wickedness and ungodliness that goes on in that city today. If God's people could be just chopped full all throughout that place, living in ungodliness and wickedness, things unthinkable. But imagine God sending a man like Jonah, to preach the gospel because they could not discern between their right hand, their left hand, and much cattle, which is a pitiful shape. In it. And providing for them the gospel truth and blessing them with what he's given us, his word. And my dear friends, God provided for his own mama there upon the cross as he was about to take his last breath giving up his life on Calvary for our sakes. My dear friends, may God help us look unto God the Father in how he's done for us and to be able to use that and think about that and follow that same pattern in our lives and follow him and seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in all that we do and think. May God help and bless each and every one of us. Thank you for the time, the kind, sweet attention. Continue to keep us in your prayers.